So for this lecture, we'll talk about consumer confidence and how that could affect aggregate demand and the general equilibrium price or inflation rate in the economy. So as we know, consumer confidence is relates to household expectations regarding future income, job prospects, and maybe even the inflation rate. Okay, so what this means is that if consumers are more confident that they're going to increase their consumption expenditure, or they're going to import more goods and services, and therefore they're going to save less. So this means that when consumer confidence is high, people are less likely to go to save due to precautionary concerns, so precautionary savings will go down. So this means when people are confident regarding their future incomes, job prospects, or the inflation rate, they're going to start spending more now and save less because they're, they're very confident that they're going to meet their future financial commitments with the current level of income and given that their job is fairly secure. So let's see how this affects the aggregate demand curve. So as we know, this analysis is a little bit different to the macroeconomic demand analysis in that the quantity axis or the quantity supplied is in fact income or GDP. And the y-axis, which was price initially, is now inflation, which we denote pi. So now we have inflation mapped against income. So we know that the demand curve, or the aggregate demand curve, is downward sloping. And we talked about why this aggregate demand curve in the economy is downward sloping on the lecture um, Talking about why this is this is aggregate this aggregate demand curve is actually downward sloping, and we also saw that the aggregate supply curve is actually curved like that because there must be an upwards limit to production. But for simplicity, we're just going to assume that there's going to be a short run aggregate supply curve, which is different from a long run aggregate supply curve. Let's make this a little bit clearer. So short run aggregate supply curve and also a long run aggregate supply curve. Because as we know, in the short run, businesses are just going to supply whatever is demanded by consumers. And this means they may overwork labor or may overutilize the, the labor force. So there's a short run and a long run aggregate supply curve. And we assume that the economy starts off at equilibrium at pi zero and y star, which is the potential output of an economy. So y star, as we know, equals the potential GDP. And so this is the maximum amount of GDP that is sustainable in the long run by this economy, given the, the capital, labor, and technological efficacy of this economy. So let's say that consumer confidence would actually increase. And this means savings would go down. And so as we know, aggregate demand equals A, sorry, C plus G, C plus I plus G plus net exports. Because um, consumption will go up due to an increase in consumer confidence, and because imports will go up as well, and therefore net exports would decrease. Assumingly, if these two um, magnitudes are the same, then aggregate demand wouldn't change in this economy. But as we know, consumption consists of around 80% or the majority of aggregate demand in an economy. When consumption increases, it is most likely that aggregate demand would increase. And this is reflected by a shift to the right of the aggregate demand curve. So this analysis is, is fairly similar to what we did with microeconomic demand factors. And so the aggregate demand curve shifts from AD, let's call this AD0, and to AD1. 
Okay, so what happens in the short run because of the inertial rate of inflation, because businesses can't actually change their prices in the short run due to menu costs, and also due to contracts in labor, they're not going to change their prices in the short run, and they're just going to supply what the market is demanding. So in this case, this would be Y1. And so what this means is there must be an expansionary gap between a Y star being the potential output and the actual output here at Y1. So there is an expansionary gap. And what this means in relation to the business cycle, so let's just let's draw this business cycle diagram here, is that there is a boom period or an expansionary period. So we know that the business cycle is time relative to GDP and it follows a cyclical fashion like that and as we know now this point here is expansionary so somewhere here let's say this is Y1 so it exceeds the the trend or the average rate of GDP growth the economy should exhibit for it to be sustainable and so what this means is businesses would then recognize that there is an expansionary gap at Y1 and therefore increase their prices in the in the long run and so they will move from point A to point B here and therefore shift their short run aggregate supply curve upwards from SRAS or so short run aggregate supply 0 to short run aggregate supply 1 and this increase in price is reflected by a change or an increase in the inflation rate from pi 1, pi 0 to pi 1. And as we can see now, an increase in aggregate demand would then lead to a contraction or an increase in consumption or um, consumer confidence, I should say, would then lead to a contraction in aggregate demand to this point C here. And so, in the long run, the economy has not actually deviated from its potential output, but the inflation rate, there has been an inbuilt or permanent increase in the inflation rate from pi 0 to pi 1. So now we can see that although aggregate demand has increased the potential output, or not the potential output, but the actual output at y1 in the short run, in the long run, they will return to the actual output at Y star. And so what this means is that household expectations regarding future income, job prospects, and inflation rate in the form of consumer confidence, when that increases, then the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right because consumption outweighs imports. And that because consumption outweighs imports, aggregate demand will increase at every level of price. And so businesses will eventually respond to that. If we come back to the concept of relative prices, they're going to see that they're going to have a, a decrease in inventories here, or an unplanned decrease in inventories, and therefore expand their demand from point B to point C here. And in the long run, output will stay the same, but the inflation rate, or the inbuilt inflation rate, would increase as well. The opposite could also be examined if there is a decrease in consumer confidence. We can see that the, the graph would actually shift, or the aggregate demand curve would actually shift to the left. So let's assume, let's actually redo this graph to make it clearer for you guys. So we know that when aggregate demand shifts to the left, in the short run, because of menu costs and because of um, certain contracts made to labor, so we have Y and Pi, because of certain contracts we make, lower well, supply, and an inflate. Oh, that's a bit wonky. Okay, so we have an aggregate demand curve here. Because when com consumer confidence decreases, we can see that there will be a shift to the left of the aggregate demand curve. And that initially, 
this potential output at y star would actually decrease to an actual output of y dash. And so now here, when there's a decrease in consumer's confidence, when spending actually decreases and exports actually, imports actually decrease and savings increase, we can see that the aggregate demand curve will shift to the left and they therefore exhibit a contractionary gap. And this represents somewhere along here in the business cycle. So what happens in the short term, businesses will exhibit an increase in unplanned inventories, an unplanned increase in inventories I should say, and therefore in the long run they would decrease their short run aggregate supply curve so as to get rid of this increase, unplanned increase in inventories. And so in the long run, potential output, given that no supply side conditions has changed, potential output in the long run will stay the same, but there will be a, an inbuilt, inbuilt permanent decrease in the inflation rate from pi zero to pi one. So that's how aggregate, how consumer confidence can affect the equilibrium or the market equilibrium of GDP and the inflation rate in the economy.